to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa, and today I'm going to be making a special recipe that will be perfect for this fall season, especially if you still have to celebrate Thanksgiving or Halloween or just for any fall day in particular. This is the perfect dessert. What I'm making is basically a twist on your classic pumpkin pie because I will be showing you how I make my pumpkin tart with a meringue topping. So basically instead of a pie crust, it's going to be a tart crust with a spiced pumpkin filling and a delicious creamy meringue on top that is basically sort of like whipped cream taken to another level. So if you're the kind of person who loves a whipped cream with your pumpkin pie, you're going to adore this dessert. It is so good. I of course made it already and it was literally gone within 24 hours. <laughs> so this is a great recipe and I'm happy to share it with you. I'll be showing you how to make a Swiss meringue, the spiced pumpkin filling, and of course the crust, which is basically a shortbread crust. So let's get started and let's make the pie crust. So first things first in this delicious dessert, we have to make the crust, which is basically a short crust. It's going to be much sweeter than your typical pumpkin pie crust, and it really helps to make this a true tart. I already have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour right into this food processor. This is going to help us make our crust super fast, so it will only take seconds, really. It's actually harder to clean this thing. So to that, I'm going to be adding three-fourths of a cup of icing sugar right to the flour, and as well, half a teaspoon of salt. Now I'm going to put the lid on and pulse this for a couple seconds just to get the ingredients all mixed up. Now that the dry mix is incorporated, that's basically just our flour, salt, and sugar, we are going to be adding the butter. You need one cup of unsalted butter, of course, because we already added the salt, which I just cubed into little pieces to make it easier. So we're just going to place that right into the flour mixture, and then again, lid on, and we are going to pulse this until the butter is combined and this mixture will look a bit sandy. So it is really important that the butter you use is cold. So my butter was straight from the fridge, it's ice cold, and you can even feel that this mixture is now cold. Perfect, so now we're adding our wet ingredients. We are going to be adding one egg yolk. Now don't throw away the whites because we will be needing all the whites we can for that meringue later. So set the whites aside, but we need one egg yolk right in the mix. And then we need two and a half tablespoons of cold water, and we also need half a tablespoon of extract. You can use any extract, but I use rum extract. That's why the water here looks a bit amber colored. <laughs> so right in the mix. And we are going to put the lid back on, and now pulse this until a dough forms. You'll see because it will all sort of glob together, and then you're basically done. I'm just going to lightly flour my surface and take this dough out of this food processor. Be very careful not to cut yourself because these blades are very sharp. And now I'm just going to be working the dough for literally like 10 seconds. So I basically am forming this into a round disc. Do you see how easy it was to make that dough? I think it literally took not even five minutes. So with plastic wrap, I'm just going to be covering this dough. And this needs to rest in the fridge. You can obviously do this overnight, but if you're going to be making this right away, like me, for about 45 minutes to an hour, just to firm up a bit, and then we can begin rolling this. Okay, so about 45 minutes later, I pop this dough out of the fridge. It's nice and firm and cool as opposed to before when it was really soft. So now I just have it on a lightly floured surface. I'm lightly flouring the top and we are going to roll this out. It's a little bit firm, so work it a bit. But I find that 45 minutes in the fridge is probably perfect, 45 to an hour. Now this is not like your typical pie crust. This is going to be like a short crust tart dough really, and it makes this tart really elegant and I just feel like it's perfect. So you really wanna roll out this tart dough to basically be a little bit like maybe like two inches over the actual size of the pan that you're using. This pie pan is of course just a standard nine inch pastry pan. What I'm going to be doing is taking this dough and rolling it like this and then placing this right on to the pan. That is perfect, that way it doesn't break. Now with our hands, we are just going to be pressing this lightly inside. Now press it in and when we fold it over, when the edge folds over, we wanna leave quite a bit of space. And then what we are going to be doing is taking the rolling pin and pressing this lightly on the surface. And look, the edges just perfectly come off and our pie is wonderful. Now we're just going to press this in 
Now what we are going to be doing is taking a fork and scoring the dough probably about 50 times or so. <laughs> but we really want to make sure to let the air come out and not make a huge bubble. So basically when this is going in the oven, because when I blind bake this, I don't bother putting tin foil over and beans and things to weigh it down. I just, I don't have time for that really. So I blind bake this and if you score it well enough, your pie won't rise and create a huge bubble in the middle. Afterwards, it will go down nicely and it will just be a nicely formed pie crust. We're going to be placing this in the freezer for 15 minutes before we bake it. So while this is in the freezer for 15 minutes, I like to set my oven to 375 because it takes about 15 minutes to get warm. So the oven is set to 375 and my tart just came out of the freezer. It is icy cold. Since this has the bottom that if you're holding it from underneath, it can pop out. I like to bake this on a baking tray already. So this is going to be going into the oven for 25 minutes. Again, we are just blind baking this for 25 minutes at 375. So now it's time to make the spiced pumpkin pie filling for this beautiful pumpkin tart. So first things first, we need the eggs and the sugar. We have two large whole eggs and we have two egg yolks. Like I said before, do not throw away the whites. Keep them aside because when I made this recipe, I had in mind not to have any waste. So those egg whites will be incorporated later on when we make the meringue. So right to this KitchenAid, I'm going to be plopping these eggs inside. And now with those eggs, I also have half a tablespoon of rum extract. Of course, you can add a vanilla or any really extract of your choice that you think would be good in here. You can even add an alcohol, but I prefer the rum extract because it gives it that nice depth of flavor. Now to the eggs and the extract, I'm going to be adding half a cup of white sugar. And to the eggs and the white sugar, we are going to be adding one fourth of a cup of packed brown sugar. So really pack it in. And now we are going to be giving this egg and sugar mixture a whip until everything seems incorporated and pretty smooth. So let this go for about a minute or two. So now that the eggs and the extract and of course the sugars have been whipped up, you'll see that the color is much paler and it looks really nice. Now it's time to add the rest of the mix and then it's done, so it's super easy. So what I have here is two cups of canned pumpkin. It is basically just pumpkin puree and I'm going to add that right to the KitchenAid. And I should mention if you have any leftover pumpkin, it's a really good treat for your dogs. <laughs> and next we're also going to be adding three fourths of a cup of heavy whipping cream. And then we are going to be adding basically this pumpkin pie spice mix that I made, which is one tablespoon of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and half a teaspoon of salt, right into the mix as well. And now I'm going to whip this again on about a medium to even high speed for about one to two minutes until everything looks nicely combined. Okay, so this mixture looks perfect. It really took very little time, and this is going to be a delicious pumpkin pie base for this tart. So after the 25 minutes, we will have blind baked that tart crust. Take the tart out of the oven and increase your oven to 425 degrees. Once your oven has reached 425 degrees, your tart should be a little bit cooler and now we can add that pumpkin pie filling. And don't be scared, you can fill this pumpkin spice filling right to the rim of the tart crust. Place the now filled tart into the oven for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes without taking the pie out, lower the oven to 375 degrees and continue to bake this pumpkin tart for another 35 minutes. Now we have to let this sit at room temperature for basically, I would say an hour to an hour and a half before we can pop that in the fridge and let that sit for about another 30 minutes to an hour. I actually like to eat my pumpkin pie more on the cold side, so I prefer when that is cold. When the pie has a finish cooling off in the fridge, we can then top it with our meringue. this pumpkin tart is out of the oven. The kitchen smells incredible. It's a little bit darker here so the lighting might look slightly different but here we are and now we have our time to make our meringue because the tart needs to cool off. 
Let's go ahead and make our Swiss meringue super simple. So we need half a cup of egg whites. This might be the three large whites that we already had left over. If it's not enough, just crack another egg and you might need three to four egg whites basically. But half a cup should be great, so right into this bowl. And to that we are going to be adding one cup of sugar, just regular granulated sugar, right to this bowl. And then we are going to be giving this a mix just to combine it. So once this is incorporated, it should only take a few seconds to mix up. You will of course notice that this looks a bit slimy and it will feel grainy. That is because the sugar hasn't cooked into the eggs yet. That's where the double broiler comes in. So I have that pot of water on the go filled up about a quarter of the way with water. And this is on a medium to low heat. And now this is going to be very convenient. I'm simply going to be placing that over the pot of water and continuously stirring this for I would say anywhere from like a six to eight minutes or until you feel the mixture and you don't feel any grains of sugar whatsoever. Of course, if you wanna be on the safer side, you can use a thermometer. And once you put that in and it says about 170 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to be ready to whip this into our Swiss meringue. Okay, so now that this egg and sugar mixture has finished cooking, let's turn this into our Swiss meringue by whipping this up. So we are just basically going to be whipping this until it reaches the desired thickness, which is almost like stiff peaks. It will look very thick and fluffy. I'll let you know how many minutes I let this go for in a second, but basically on a high speed of about eight, we're just going to let this whip. So the Swiss meringue is done. I had this going for, I would say, close to eight minutes on about a level eight speed. And this looks perfect. It has these beautiful peaks and I can assure you that it actually tastes delicious right now. I think of Swiss meringue as sort of like the ultimate frosting. So this is gonna be perfect on top of our pumpkin tart. And it's going to look so pretty. And we are, of course, eventually also going to torch this as well. beautiful spiced pumpkin tart here. I popped it out of the pie tin and it came out perfectly. As you can see, the crust is lovely and golden brown and the actual pumpkin pie filling is set so nicely. There's not even a crack in sight. It's not dipped or wet. It's just absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, we're going to cover it anyways, but it's going to be such a delicious topping. You guys will love it. You can take this beautiful Swiss meringue that we made and put it in a piping bag and pipe some nice lovely designs on top, but I prefer the easy way. It's a little bit more rustic, but I just like to slap this meringue right on top and sort of pile it up. And I think that it looks so nice, so I'll just show you how I do it. I just grab a nice scoop, pile it on this beautiful tart. As you guys can see, this meringue is so fluffy and creamy. If you've never had a meringue before or have only had it on those like store-bought lemon meringue pies, this is nothing like that. It's not eggy, it's like creamy. It's sort of like the ultimate frosting. I guess I would compare it almost to like a marshmallow, like a marshmallow fluff you can say, but it is so delicious. So what I like to do is now that I've piled it high, I just like to smooth it around and leave a little bit of the pumpkin edge, that way people know what they're digging into. It almost looks like a mound of whipped cream, which is usually what people are used to having on their pumpkin pie. I mean, I'm the kind of person who puts whipped cream basically on the entire pie, so <laughs> this is like the perfect alternative for me. So I leave some little swoops here because what I'm going to be doing is torching this meringue my hair back because <laughs> now I'm going to be torching this baby I love using a kitchen blowtorch you'll see how this white fluffy meringue turns golden brown right before our eyes it is so pretty of course if you don't have a blowtorch you don't have to torch this by any means this just adds that extra I feel like warm fall cozy appeal and it gives it that nice like toasted marshmallow flavor I just love it who would be mad at this tart? I mean, it is perfect. It is basically the ultimate pumpkin pie. This is my pumpkin meringue tart and it is beautiful. So let's cut into this bad boy. Oh my gosh. I actually am dying to give this a try. Oh, look at that creamy meringue, so good. Okay, and now that this pie is all sliced up and ready to go, I have a bite in my hand and I'm going to take my first bite of this delicious tart. Mmm, wow. 
That nice buttery tart crust is almost like a shortbread cookie and the pumpkin pie filling is perfectly spiced because I like mine to be a little bit more spiced. And the top is just so creamy and velvety and rich and like, guys, I mean, I don't know what else to say. You have to make this. If you don't, you're really missing out on the ultimate pumpkin pie experience. I personally feel like pumpkin pie is my favorite pie, so this just takes it to another level. It's so good, I'm just gonna have another bite. <laughs> So guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you do decide to give this pumpkin meringue tart a try. I know you'll absolutely love it. If you love a fluffy, soft whipped meringue, it's not eggy in any way. And if you love a beautiful, delicious spiced pumpkin pie, I mean, this is like perfect. It's on another level and I know it would be great to any Thanksgiving event or Halloween party, or by all means, just to bake for the fall season, because why not give this a try? I will, of course, have this recipe listed on my blog, ladolcealisa.com, so all the written ingredients and directions will be on there, as well as some additional pictures as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you do give this recipe a try. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of it, and until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys and happy baking for the fall. Oh my god, I think this is your best recipe yet. Yeah? Like it's good. And it's actually even good if your dough comes over the edge of it. Oh my god, she's baking. Luna! <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> god, when I keep laughing, I need to be like I'm like, oh god. <laughs> okay. So now that the 15 minutes has passed, oh. <laughs> and the oven just went off, <laughs> now that my pie is miraculously missing, <laughs>